Over the past few years, I've become really interested and inspired by craftspeople. By this new community of makers who are finding fresh and vibrant energy in the craft techniques of the past. As a songwriter, my work is intangible and ephemeral. I don't get to end the day with paint on my hands, and I'm envious of those who do. Hannah Cousins is a lino cut printmaker. She's also my longest serving creative collaborator. There's just something about her style, the boldness, the simplicity, and the, and the texture that just resonates with my music perfectly. The lino cut that she's designed for the cover for the new album is to me the perfect expression of her craft talking to mine and expressing something that I don't think a digital design or a photograph ever could. I think we're quite lucky. Visually, we're both generally on the same page, but I think it connects nicely aesthetically to the music that you make. It's not a very free or instant process. There's a lot of labour that has to go into it before you get any results. You do see people that, make, that do this effect. It's lino, textural, mm -hmm. and, and, but it's all done on computer. Yeah. And obviously that kind of eradicates all that. Yeah, for me, I could create exactly this probably using a computer, but personally that would take the joy out of the process. Mm. And I like that there's an element of unpredictability and it's very final. Once something's been cut out, it'd be very difficult to fix it. I've got to stay away, no I'm not afraid. Finally I get to see the light breaking through the cracks. Even though I know it gets harder and harder to live like the winds at your back There is gold but there is no man Once Hannah has finished the intricate carving of the lino design it's ready to be printed for the album cover but I also wanted to use it as the basis for a special edition print and my friends Nick Hand and Ellen Bills run the Letterpress Collective in Bristol and they agreed to produce the print using traditional typesetting and printmaking techniques and there's just something so seductive to me about letterpress. Walking into their workshop is it's like stepping into the past, where time slows down and where each and every letter has its meaning and its place. I always found it interesting, I can't never remember any, but you always used to tell me there's loads of phrases in um, that English language that have been taken from. Hmm. Well, make a good impression is one. One of the things about letterpress printing is that a lot of people say really like letterpress printing because of the deep impression, but actually that's quite bad printing. So yeah. good printing is where you just sort of kiss the paper with the ink and there's just a small bunch of us keeping it, keeping it going, which is why we're here, because in Bristol there were 14,000 letterpress printers just 50 years ago, and now um, just me and Ellen. It is very direct and it's a bit like we, we were saying earlier, like music, you know, your music is a very direct form of communication and this is... Leaving in the, some of the squeaks and some of the, the mistakes, for want of a better word, and the kind of, I don't know, there's a texture to that in sound, isn't there? And um, I suppose you, for me, I, I'm attracted to this form of art because it, it's so textural and um, handmade and you know human and you know for example the type has a kind of legacy and all the kind of marks of its history like this type that we're using um, here might have been used like 50 times might have been used a hundred mm -hmm. times before so it carries all that kind of legacy or the, the marks or you know the the, um, the impressions um, and so it is similar it is similar 